Hi, this is Steve Westmark from Council Realty. Watch, thanks for watching my video blog this week. This week I'm bringing in uh, Brad Nyberg with Quality Radon uh, to talk about radon and how to deal with it. Welcome, Brad. Well, thank you. Many times I have buyers who want to have a radon test done with their inspection. And what is that inspector looking for and what does it mean once they've done a radon test and it comes back with whatever readings it has? Well, initially, the inspector is going to place a radon test device, most often electronic in nature, so it's a data gathering machine. Gathers radon data hour by hour, minute by minute, and we'll present the inspector with a graph, a table, and an average of radon levels throughout the test. And so what the inspector is trying to ascertain is, you know, what are the levels of radon gas in the property? Are they excessive? Are they moderate? Are they low? And should action be taken? Well, I know there's measurements that come out there, something like a 4.0, whatever. Why don't you explain a little bit about what these measurements mean and what changes are going on in the marketplace with that? Certainly. Currently, the EPA's action level is 4.0 picures per liter. What that really means is an amount of radiation per liter or volume of air. And at 4.0, the EPA has said that that is a level that's not acceptable, and 3.9 is really a passing grade. Well, you know, what it really comes down to is how much radiation do you want to be exposed to. Now, that standard has been in place for over 20 years, and it's going to be changed in the next couple of years to be 2.7 or less. And so ideally, you want your home to be as low as reasonable, as low as possible. And so the 4.0 level came out to be what is achievable you know, for a radon mitigation system. And the World Health Organization has come out two years ago this month with a recommendation that all countries reduce their acceptable levels to 2.7 or less. Now, to give you an idea what that really means to a person, you know, what is the risk of, of cancer, for example, due to radon exposure? Well, if you lived in a basement environment, you know, Minnesota, basement bedrooms are quite common. If you had a basement bedroom and you're downstairs, let's just say for the sake of discussion purposes, 24 hours a day at a reading of 3.9, that's the rough equivalent of smoking 7.8 cigarettes per day. So it's darn near a half a pack a day smoker. Now, Minnesota's a high state. We're the fourth highest in the nation. So the average home here has a reading of 5.4. Well, at 24 hour exposure, that's 10.8 cigarettes. You really double the number to find out what your exposure equivalent risk of smoking would be to your lungs. Uh, we find homes in Minnesota that are as high as 120. And, you know, average 5.4, some as low as 0 0.3, 0 0.4 without a radon system. Well, the good news is they all can be corrected. So the highest reading we found recently was 120 in Stillwater, Minnesota. And that was a couple months ago back in August and brought that down to 0 0.5. So what it really means is that a radon system is very successful at reducing radon gas in a home. We talk to many buyers and, and consult the buyers and tell them, you know, if you like the house, that's a house you want to buy, not to worry. It can be fixed. So generally what happens is when I have an inspection, the radon uh, thing comes back at a higher than good level. I give Brad a call and I have Brad go out and do radon mitigation. So Brad, when you do radon mitigation, what are you doing? Well, Steve, what we're doing is installing what's referred to as a sub-slab depressurization system. Quite literally, it is a vacuum system from the ground under the house. So you know, the inspector measured the issue. The issue is radon gas in the air. The real problem is there's radon gas building up under the house seeping into the house and thereby exposing you know, the owner, the occupants to, to radiation. So what a radon system really is, is quite literally a customized vacuum system for the ground under the house. What happens is in most cases, we come in, we cut really a five inch hole through the concrete slab of the basement, normally in an unfinished area, you know, utility room, laundry room, storage room, and ideally next to the attached garage. So we cut this five inch hole through the slab removing about a five gallon bucket or so of material. So now we have a little pit we created under the slab. We'll insert a three inch PVC pipe into the opening, reseal the concrete so it's airtight around that pipe. Then route that pipe up along the foundation wall, run through into the attached garage, run that pipe up along the garage wall to the attic of the garage, mount a very high quality radon blower upon that pipe, 
then have that pipe exit out through the roof. You know, we apply flashing and insulation materials and caulking and sealants. And we also do a nice job of sealing cracks and openings in the flab of the basement floor and seal the sump cover. So we power that system up, the fan's gonna spin, it creates a vacuum in the pit we created, and that vacuum caused the majority of ground gases, be it methane, moisture, radons, what have you, to that point of collection and this discharge outside very quickly dissipates. As you can tell, Brad is really knowledgeable on radon and helping people deal with this circumstance. So what's the best way for people to get a hold of you, Brad, to have radon mitigated on their home? Well, the best way to call me is by phone, you know, 612-521-3580. Or actually, I love emails because then I have the information in front of me, I can respond quickly. And so my email address is bradradonman, all one word, bradradonman, at gmail.com. Thanks.